Welcome to Unraveling Syphilis, a closer look at its history and impact. This video aims to provide a comprehensive exploration into the fascinating world of syphilis. We'll dive deep into its origins, its evolution, causes, symptoms, stages, complications, treatment and preventions, and the extensive impact it has had on societies throughout the ages. First, let's find out what syphilis is. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection, STI, caused by the bacterium Treponema pallidum. It is usually spread through sexual contact, including oral, anal, and vaginal sex. The infection can also be transmitted from a mother to her baby during pregnancy or childbirth, leading to congenital syphilis. Before we go into symptoms and stages let's go back to the history of this enigmatic disease and the origin theories. The history of syphilis is indeed enigmatic and intriguing, marked by a blend of medical mystery, historical debate, and cultural impact. Its origins and spread have been subjects of significant speculation and research among historians and scientists. The Origin Debate Columbian Theory One of the most prominent theories about the origin of syphilis is the Columbian Hypothesis. This theory posits that syphilis was brought to Europe by the crew of Christopher Columbus after their voyage to the Americas in the late 15th century. The first recorded outbreak of syphilis in Europe occurred in 1495 among French troops besieging Naples, which coincided closely with the return of Columbus and his crew. This timing led many to believe in a new world origin for the disease. Pre-Columbian Theory Contrary to the Columbian hypothesis, the pre-Columbian theory suggests that syphilis existed in Europe before Columbus's voyages. Proponents of this theory argue that the disease was present but perhaps misidentified as other conditions like leprosy. Evidence from skeletal remains showing signs of syphilitic infection, dating back to before Columbus's voyages, supports this theory. The emergence of syphilis had significant social and cultural implications. It was often seen as a divine punishment or a consequence of moral degeneracy, leading to stigma and discrimination against those infected. Role in Shaping Public Health and Sexuality The syphilis epidemic played a significant role in shaping early public health initiatives and attitudes towards sexuality. It led to the development of more systematic approaches to disease control and prevention, including the establishment of public health campaigns and sex education. What causes syphilis? Syphilis is caused by the bacterium Treponema pallidum. The primary routes through which this bacterium is transmitted are Sexual contact. The most common way of contracting syphilis is through direct contact with a syphilis sore during vaginal, anal, or oral sex. The bacterium enters the body through minor cuts or abrasions in the skin or mucous membranes. Mother to child transmission, congenital syphilis. Pregnant women with syphilis can transmit the infection to their unborn child. This can happen at any stage of pregnancy and can lead to serious complications, including miscarriage, stillbirth, premature birth, or the death of the newborn. Infants born with congenital syphilis may have a range of symptoms, including deformed bones, severe anemia, enlarged liver and spleen, jaundice, nerve problems, meningitis, and skin rashes. Rare forms of transmission. Less commonly, syphilis can be transmitted through infected blood transfusions. However, this is extremely rare in countries where blood is screened for STIs. There is also a theoretical risk of transmission through sharing needles or syringes contaminated with infected blood, but this mode of transmission is also rare. It's important to note that syphilis cannot be spread through casual contact, such as touching an object or surface that has been touched by a person with syphilis, using the same toilet, sharing clothing, or eating from the same utensils. The bacterium is quite fragile and cannot survive for long outside the body. How do you know you have syphilis? What are the symptoms of syphilis? Syphilis progresses through several distinct stages, each with its own set of symptoms. Understanding these stages is crucial for diagnosis and treatment. Primary syphilis. Symptoms. The first sign is a small, painless sore called a chancre, which appears at the spot where the bacteria entered the body typically on or near the genitals, anus, or mouth. Duration. The chancre develops about three weeks after exposure but can range from 10 to 90 days. It generally heals on its own within three to six weeks. Secondary syphilis. Symptoms. This stage can start with a rash on one or more areas of the body. 
The rash often appears as rough, red, or reddish-brown spots both on the palms of the hands and the bottoms of the feet. Other symptoms may include fever, swollen lymph nodes, sore throat, patchy hair loss, headaches, weight loss, muscle aches, and fatigue. Duration. These symptoms may begin as the chancre is healing or several weeks after the chancre has healed. They typically last two to six weeks and may come and go over a period of up to two years. Latent syphilis. Symptoms. This stage is defined by a lack of noticeable symptoms, despite the presence of the infection in the body. Latent syphilis is further divided into early latent stage, less than one year after secondary syphilis, and late latent stage, more than one year after secondary syphilis. Duration. The latent stage can last for years. The disease remains in the body, and it can be passed to others, particularly in the early latent stage. Tertiary syphilis. Symptoms. Occurring in about 15-30% of untreated cases, this stage can develop years to decades after initial infection. Tertiary syphilis can affect multiple organ systems, including the heart, blood vessels, brain, and nervous system. It can cause a variety of problems such as gumas, soft, tumor-like growths, neurological problems, such as stroke or meningitis, cardiovascular problems, like aortic aneurysms and aortic valve disease, and loss of muscle coordination. Duration. Symptoms at this stage are chronic and can lead to severe complications or death. Congenital syphilis, in infants. Symptoms. This occurs when a mother with syphilis passes the disease to her unborn child. Symptoms in newborns may include rash, fever, enlarged organs, jaundice, anemia, and many other complications. Duration. If not treated immediately, it can lead to long-term health complications or death in infants. Prompt diagnosis and treatment are essential at any stage of syphilis. In its early stages, syphilis is easily treatable with antibiotics. However, while treatment can cure the infection and prevent further damage, it cannot repair damage already done, especially in the later stages. Regular testing for sexually active individuals and pregnant women is crucial for early detection and treatment. What happens when syphilis is left untreated? Let's find out. Untreated syphilis can lead to severe, long-term health complications. The risk and severity of these complications increase as the disease progresses without treatment. Here are some of the major complications associated with the different stages of untreated syphilis. Neurological complications, neurosyphilis, can occur at any stage of syphilis. Symptoms include severe headache, difficulty coordinating muscle movements, paralysis, numbness, vision problems, and dementia. In severe cases, it can lead to stroke and death. Cardiovascular complications typically occur in tertiary syphilis. Can involve the aorta, leading to aortic aneurysms and aortic valve disease. These complications can be life-threatening. Ocular syphilis can lead to vision changes, decreased visual acuity, and blindness. Symptoms can include uveitis, inflammation of the UVEA, retinitis, and other eye problems. Gumatous syphilis. Characterized by the formation of gumas, which are soft, tumor-like growths of inflammatory cells. Gumas can occur in various organs, causing local damage and dysfunction. Complications in pregnancy and congenital syphilis. Pregnant women with untreated syphilis can transmit the disease to their unborn child. This can lead to miscarriage, stillbirth, premature birth, low birth weight, or death shortly after birth. Infants born with congenital syphilis may suffer from deformities, delays in development, seizures, rash, fever, swollen liver and spleen, jaundice, anemia, and various other complications. Increased risk of HIV infection. Syphilis sores can make it easier to transmit and acquire HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. Damage to multiple organs. In tertiary syphilis, the disease can damage the brain, nerves, eyes, heart, blood vessels, liver, bones, and joints. It's important to note that while early stages of syphilis can be cured with antibiotics, treatment at later stages may not reverse damage that has already occurred. Regular STI screening, early detection, and prompt treatment are crucial in preventing these serious and potentially life-threatening complications. Now, finally to the part we have been waiting for, treatment and prevention. Treating and preventing syphilis are crucial steps in managing this sexually transmitted infection. Treatment. 
Antibiotics. The primary treatment for syphilis is antibiotics, usually penicillin, which is highly effective. For those allergic to penicillin, other antibiotics like doxycycline or tetracycline may be used, though they are not recommended for pregnant women. Stage-specific treatment. Primary and secondary syphilis. Typically treated with a single intramuscular injection of penicillin. Late latent syphilis or latent syphilis of unknown duration. Requires three doses of penicillin administered at one week intervals. Neurosyphilis and congenital syphilis. Treatment usually involves intravenous penicillin every four hours for 10-14 days. After treatment, regular follow-ups and blood tests are necessary to ensure that the infection is completely cured. Sexual activity should be avoided until the treatment course is completed and tests confirm the infection is cured. Partner notification and treatment. Sexual partners should be notified, tested, and treated if necessary to prevent reinfection and spread of the disease. Prevention. Safe sex practices. Using condoms during sexual activity significantly reduces the risk of contracting syphilis. Dental dams can be used during oral sex. Regular STI screening. Regular screenings are important, especially for those with multiple sexual partners, men who have sex with men, people with HIV, and pregnant women. Early detection can prevent complications and the spread of the disease. Monogamous relationships. Being in a long-term, mutually monogamous relationship with a partner who has tested negative for syphilis reduces the risk. Avoid sharing needles. While rare, syphilis can be transmitted through shared needles. Avoiding the sharing of needles can prevent this transmission route. Prenatal screening. Regular prenatal care should include syphilis screening. Early treatment in pregnant women can prevent congenital syphilis in newborns. Education and awareness. Educating the public about the risks, symptoms, and treatment of syphilis is vital. Awareness can lead to earlier diagnosis and treatment, reducing the spread of the disease. Prevention and early treatment of syphilis are key to controlling its spread and preventing the serious health complications associated with later stages of the disease. Regular communication with healthcare providers and responsible sexual practices are the most effective strategies in managing syphilis. In conclusion, syphilis, despite being an ancient disease, remains a significant public health concern in modern times. Its ability to present in various forms and progress through multiple stages if left untreated, underscores the critical importance of awareness, early detection, and timely treatment. Please support my videos by liking, share and subscribe.